Stellar Cyber's NDR capability is designed to be feature-packed to protect the entirety of anyone's network, simple to deploy, and easy to use. The outcome from any detection and response tool, and in particular a network detection and response tool, is to get visibility into a complicated, multifaceted attack, such as what you're seeing here, and to be able to stop that attack before it completes, or in other words, defeat that threat, where that threat is not only taking advantage of the network, but also other aspects of an enterprise's environment. This is what Stellar Cyber enables. And in the next several minutes, I'm gonna walk you through the key features and differentiators that allows the product to be able to do so. So the main differentiators of Stellar Cyber's NDR is it allows all forms of the network to be collected and to be visible. That means cloud, on-prem, hybrid, spanning across Stellar Cyber's own sensors and other tools and telemetry, such as firewalls as well, to complete that visibility regardless of the tools that an enterprise might have deployed. Additionally, we've taken the architectural approach of packaging and unifying multiple network detection related capabilities together under our platform, specifically uh, intrusion detection, malware sandbox, deep packet inspection, and flow-based metadata analysis, all contained within our NDR offering. And in a way, it's almost like an NDR superset category, what we've been trying to build here. Additionally, on the detection side, more specifically and algorithmically, we have a multi-stage, multi-method approach to detections. What that means is we have detections running at the edge on our sensors in the form of rules, signatures, and machine learning. And we additionally have detections running centrally on all data collected, which is both from our sensors and other third-party products via integrations. That's also encompassing rules and machine learning, both supervised and unsupervised. And the reason that we have a multi-stage, multi-method approach is that different techniques and approaches to detections have their merits. And it's better to use the right technique for the right security outcome, as opposed to trying to um, blanket apply something like unsupervised machine learning to all problems. That's not the right approach for security outcome. So we've thought uh, very deeply about applying the right methods in the right places. And then I'll show all of that momentarily in the demo. Um, next, in terms of data sources, we not only have data from the network, but we also have data from other contextual sources like Active Directory, Identity, SAS, and EDR. And this is extremely important for contextualizing what's happening on the network and getting full visibility and ultimately stopping attacks wherever they might be. And ultimately, the user experience story that I'll show while doing this demo is that it's fundamentally easy to use. So with that, the first step is to show how collection happens in the platform. First, what I'll go ahead and show uh, is focus on our sensors. So at a high level, data can come into Stellar Cyber through three uh, mechanisms, either data directly generated from our sensors. So this would be IDS, metadata flow, um, DPI, malware sandbox, two from log sources that are forwarded through our sensors. So our sensors can be deployed on-prem. We can pick up firewall logs directly from there via syslog and then forward those logs to um, a central location securely. And then three through API connectors, which would be to connect to something like an EDR product. So what you're seeing here in this demo instance is the different sensors that have been deployed. You can see this, um, this security sensor that's been deployed. Uh, you can see all the different versioning, you know, it's authorization status. You're able to see some additional information such as its IP address and its name. And right from this single console, I'm able to manage this sensor, whether it might, that might be create an SSH tunnel, upgrade that sensor, importing additional rules that are not coming through our standardized feeds um, and do whatever I need to do to authorize the sensor. Importantly, these sensors are deployed either on the network off something like um, span port uh, or in the cloud for capturing uh, VPC flow and something like AWS 
or they can be deployed on containers or uh, server assets as well. So it's very flexible in where we can get these sensors out into the world and they package up that same capability. Now for further customizing exactly what goes onto these sensors, we have uh, a feature called sensor profiles. And what this allows a user to do is to deploy the specific um, subsets or supersets of features that they want deployed onto certain sensors so that they might um, only want to identify certain application information from deep packet inspection. They might want to uh, correlate or detect incomplete sessions on the network level at the edge, or maybe they want to turn this off. They might have their own IDS rules that they want to import or only want to run certain signatures, and then they can also customize the malware sandbox. Extremely flexible. However, it comes prescriptive out of the box where we have uh, certain templates that are commonly deployed and used just in terms of capturing best practices. So Stellar Cyber sensors are extremely powerful and they do all of this detection and data generation at the edge in addition to that second data collection method, which is the collection of logs forwarded uh, to our platform from something like a firewall. So that's that covers kind of the two, the first two methods of getting data into, uh, into Stellar Cyber. The next methodology that I want to show, the third methodology for collecting data into the Stellar Cyber platform, NDR platform, is on connectors. And so we have broad support for hundreds of integrations in our platform. So let's say that I wanted to connect to a firewall uh, for purposes of response. And in this example, it's a checkpoint firewall. I'm able to go ahead and name my connector right here. And this is going to be response only. So this is going to be blocking, uh, creating in a block, either mid investigation or through some automation rule. And all I need to do is set up the various credentials. Um, again, this would be connected via a sensor that's already deployed in the same um, either data center or environment as this firewall and go ahead and collect this and then I'm done and I add this connector. And you can see in my, our demo instance here, we have a number of different connectors set up such as Barracuda Firewall, F5 Firewalls, uh, among other integrations. It takes only a several minutes to configure uh, the typical data sources for a customer. And so they're able to get up and running extremely quickly. And with all of this kind of introduction of how to acquire data, what does some of those raw events look like in Stellar Cyber? What you're seeing here is a um, an IDS event, and the data format here is uh, in a pretty raw format, and I'm going to work up my way to show all the way back to that incident picture, that highly correlated attack that was prevented within Stellar Cyber. And um, I've got all the key data fields if I just want to look at a single IDS event, specifically source destination, so it's all contained within the United States in this example. Um, the category of IDS, in this case was Network Trojan on Vista, and then I can actually see the specific signature uh, that was triggered along with the ID if I wanted to continue this information. So this comes directly off of our sensor in this specific example. Another data source, another raw event that comes off our sensor um, is that malware sandbox. Um, so we're reconstructing files uh, off the network and then trying to determine uh, if it's uh, malicious or suspicious at the edge or benign. And then if uh, it's unknown, we submit that to a malware sandbox or detonation. And in this specific example, what you're seeing is uh, some traffic from the UK to the United States, uh, where this specific file hash was deemed malicious and was actually detonated in our malware sandbox. The next example that I wanna show, just to kind of continue completing the, the breadth of the network data that we're looking at here, this is some pretty simple uh, a DPI level of analysis off of network traffic. All of this happening on an internal networks that have been geolocated within the United States. Uh, this specific traffic happening over SSL. You can see the destination um, host as well. And then uh, you can also start to see some, uh, this was also encrypted traffic, uh, which we're able to still all perform all this information on encrypted traffic, very important point. 
you can start to see some of the enrichment that we I, we do on the data at the same, in addition to uh, just normalization. And so because we've seen this host before and we have a powerful asset management capability in the platform, we know that this host is actually tagged with PCI. And so we're enriching this underlying record of flow anal SSL flow analysis uh, with this information, which makes it much more powerful to run detections and prioritize. And the next external uh, product data source that I want to show uh, is a very interesting one on the topic of NDR is actually Corelight. Uh, and so we have out-of-the-box integrations with Corelight. They make fantastic sensors. We use those sensors to collect additional telemetry from our customers if they already have them available. Sometimes this is a good cost benefit analysis for the customers so they don't have to uh, deploy our sensors in addition to core light sensors if they're already deployed. Um, but you can see this is doing similar um, uh, traffic level analysis, in this case, uh, HTTPS, uh, all traffic contained within the United States and generating telemetry that's natively ingested into Stellar Cyber. And the final raw data element that I want to show um, is some non-traditional uh, network source, and that's specifically uh, some CrowdStrike data. And so, as mentioned previously, we're not only collecting uh, traditional network data into Stellar Cyber's NDR, we're also collecting important contextual information like Active Directory, EDR, SaaS applications, um, and this really gets us a holistic look into the network, wherever that, that network is. So with all this data in our platform, what we're able to do is uh, run automated detections um, on this, in this corpus of data. And if you recall, we do a multi-stage, multi-method. So at this point, the data is in our central platform and we are running rules. We're running supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning. And the reason that we're taking multiple methods uh, is that each uh, approach has its, its merit. And so, for example, outbound to Tor node is an out of the box detection that we have in our platform. This is using simple threat intelligence to find a match based off network traffic, wherever that network traffic came from, and to be able to <coughs> allow a user to understand that this could be a, a malicious attempt at exfiltration. Um, and this data enrichment via threat intelligence happens out of the box. So users don't have to worry about configuring it. The data is automatically enriched. And this just goes back to having a platform that's easy to use. Another example uh, of a network-based detection would be um, a dynamically generated uh, domain. So this is highly characteristic of uh, malware exfiltrating data, standing up a new domain, and then using that for command and control. What we've done in this case is actually uh, done supervised machine learning offline and then deploy those models to all customers as we update them based off training on real world data samples of uh, recently registered domains that have been used in malware. And so there's different characteristics about the naming convention, the time and other properties. And so we can actually determine with some level of confidence that uh, this particular domain that you're seeing here was, is actually being used for, as command and control. Uh, and has been dynamically generated. Uh, so this is an example of supervised machine learning in our platform. And the final example that I wanna show as kind of showing off some unsupervised machine learning uh, is our internal user agent anomaly. And so we can pick this up from any source of network traffic. And uh, really it's just looking for a <coughs> uncommon user agent, in this case, HTTP connection was used to some, to some private to private communication um, by Nessus, which isn't a great example. Here's perhaps a better example. Um, private to private again, which was using a, uh, a bash command and that content type has never been seen before. And so in this case, uh, this might not be the most high signal um, detection on its own, but when correlated, which is the next step in kind of our security operations flow that I'm taking you through, uh, it's very relevant information. So the data has been collected from all these different sources. We run auto automated out of the box detections on multiple different methods. Users are able to create their own rules and alerts as well, which I'll show in a moment. Um, but where all this culminates is to be able to start to stitch together instead of looking at you know, 3000 alerts uh, in this demo instance to be able to look at these higher signal, um, higher fidelity 
incidents. And these are attack storylines essentially uh, that are associated association of multiple alerts together. So in this kind of example that you're seeing here, uh, this brute force or successful login, which shows 24 alerts being correlated across a few days. And you can see the kind of the timeline, different events happening, you know, either seconds apart or minutes apart. Um, most of these detections are traditional network based detections. So this is a external brute force attack. And we can pick this up off of, um, you know, directly off our sensor or other traffic data sources. And we can see the details. This is actually a pretty uh, high risk uh, alert on its own. But what we see is that this user then landed on CrowdStrike uh, to uh, an endpoint with CrowdStrike and then triggered a detection on CrowdStrike. There was some additional other malware, which in this case was an IDS alert. Um, multiple of these alerts happened over the course of a few seconds. There was some port scanning, signaling lateral movement, um, some uh, SIN flood, which also was picked up off our sensors. And it, once you get kind of all the way to the bottom of this event, you start to see some SQL usage, SQL dump file, uh, and then some uh, DNS tunneling and some actual ransomware detections as well. Lots of things happening in this incident, but importantly, this is automatically correlated by our underlying machine learning, um, which is using graph ML to actually stitch this together in real time and also be adaptive in its learning. And the whole point of this is that a, so a user can be more efficient, more effective, and not try to wire together and correlate events manually. And probably the most important thing that I'll show you is that while this picture has been automatically correlated, you can take automated response directly from our platform. <coughs> that response might be going out to a firewall and blocking an IP. And this is being picked up directly off of this event that I'm looking at here. And so I'm carrying that uh, metadata right to this little form here. And I'm able to say, uh, let's do a 30, a five minute block onto this Fortinet firewall that's relevant to this part of this event. Um, and so at any point in any investigation, I have all integrations at my fingertips to take response. This is hugely important for having effective workflows and not having to go to multiple screens. But what's even more powerful and more important for security teams is to be able to automate things based off certain conditions. And so we have um, full automation capability in our NDR, uh, NDR platform where users can configure playbooks or load from predefined playbooks um, that look for certain criteria, whether that's an alert or some incident condition, and then take those same actions either back to the firewall um, back to an EDR or just run some arbitrary script that might be relevant for their organization and begin to build uh, a repertoire of all of these different playbooks so that their organization can run more autonomously and more efficiently. And then the users can be uh, freed up to do things like threat hunting or create new content or, or just conduct security strategy. So essentially the entire Secure NDR and security operations workflow we've attempted to automate from collection, deployment, normalization, enrichment, detections, correlation, and then actual response back into end controls to defeat threats before it, that incident picture might complete as an example. And that's really the power of our NDR offering is doing all of that across all forms of network telemetry and network data sources. So thanks, and I hope you enjoyed the demo.